Okay, so it's August here in Georgia and it's still as hot as can be. So we're gonna talk about some products, tips, and DIY projects that you can do that are gonna keep you feeling cool. So stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Wait. I'm Chris, and today I wanna to talk to you about some great tips to stay cool in the RV. Now it's August, we're in Georgia, it's still hot, 90 degree days. I know summer's coming to an end, but if you live in Florida, Texas, some other parts of the country, the deep south, the heat's not going anywhere. And if you live in an RV, or if you're still camping a lot, well, we know these things get hot. So I wanna to touch base on some products we use some tips and even some DIY projects that we've done and things we've learned over almost four years of full-time RV living to help keep the RV cool. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. And the first thing we're just gonna simply talk about are some tips to try to stay cool in the RV. Okay, first things first, some tips. Number one, use your awnings to provide some shade. And I'm not talking about just sitting outside providing shade. But as you can see, when we have our awnings out, it provides tons of shade on the side of the camper. And that just keeps that sun from beating down on the wall of the camper, heating things up. We notice a big difference when we're able to have both of our awnings out and it provides shade when the sun is on that side of the camper, how much less our AC is kicking on and running. Now on extreme windy days, like when we're down in Texas, we really just can't put the awnings out that much because the wind will just absolutely destroy these things. They're really not made for windy conditions. You even have to be careful in the rain, make sure you keep them on a slant. But we love the awnings and anytime we can, we like to keep them out. It provides tons of shade and just helps keep the camper a lot cooler. And while we're on the subjects of awnings, another great product that we've recently been using is the RV Awning Shade Kit from Camco. Pretty easy install with these. The hardest part is just kind of getting to it. If you have an actual, you know, A-frame ladder, that's the best, a real tall one. We have the collapsible ladder, which you really don't want to put against this because this is kind of going to move. I, I, you could probably do it. So here I am, I back the truck up, have the ladder in the truck. Uh, you could get on top of the cab of your truck, if you're comfortable doing that. Uh, you could possibly move your picnic table around. So we have this little step ladder and we're going to get up here. And you have to open this up and there's a third groove. You have a groove for your awning you have a groove for accessories and you have a groove for the light NARS. And you have to get the groove to slide these into, um, lined up with a special little opening up here. And I'll show you that. I'll get the camera up there and show you more on that. This is the perfect time of day. These are much needed right about now. Yeah, I should have put this up this morning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't wait till it's 100 degrees. Is if you don't want to use it, you can actually kind of slide it just like a curtain all the way to one side or the other. It's also gonna be able to roll up with the awning as well. These things work great. We just let them hang right there. Um, it just provides extra shade, a little bit of privacy. We don't keep them staked to the ground because we do put the awnings in and out so much. I'm sure if we staked them into the ground, they'd be pretty safe during most wind storms and stuff like that, but we just don't like to take the chance. And not only that, but our awning is actually mounted really high in the camper, all the way up on our gutter. I've seen some RVs where they're lower, and I've also seen some awnings where the uh, pitch is a little bit different. It comes down closer to the ground. We would need some extremely long bungees if we wanted to stake it into the ground. So we just opted not to do that, but the great thing with it is now we can just roll it up real quick. They just roll right into your awning. Just make sure they're spaced out nice and flat when doing so. And they've been great just to provide some more shade and you can't beat that. Let's stick with the outside of the camper and a few things you can do and some quick tips. Another thing is just keep your basement storage doors closed when you're not using them. I'm kind of bad about this. I know a lot of times I'll usually have all my bottom basement storage doors wide open, left open all day, and you're just letting tons of heat come in there that's gonna seep into the RV. I can totally tell on the days where I actually keep them closed and I open that door how much cooler it is in there versus when I leave them open and the sun's just beating in there and heating up the camper from underneath. So whenever possible, keep those basement storage doors closed. Now let's jump on top of the camper and a few things you can do up here. We have the Max Air vent covers. This is great because it's gonna provide some more shade on your vent covers. Also, as you can see on our shower skylight, we opted for the smoke haze color, 
you don't want to get the clear one. If you get the clear one for your shower, it will provide more light, but it's going to provide a lot more heat inside there too. We also have these smoky tent shade vent covers as well. So all these vent covers are just going to reduce the amount of sunlight coming into your RV. And now while we're up here, let's talk about the AC units. And the biggest thing you can do is keep your AC units serviced, cleaned, and working properly. Now I'm not gonna get into it too much today. You wanna clean your condenser coils. You wanna clean your evaporator coils. You wanna go inside and make sure your filters are very clean. We vacuum these all the time. Keep everything nice, clean, maintained. We have a whole video and I'll put a link to that right over here. Also in the video description, we'll have links and references to other videos that I mentioned. And in that video, we talk all about how to service your ACs. We do it once a year in springtime before we really start using them how we keep everything cleaned, how we check on them, because that's the lifeblood of your camper to keep it cool, are these AC units. Now, while we're on the subject of AC units, let's talk about a DIY project I did that just totally increases the amount of airflow that is gonna get to your vents if you have a duct system. This is probably the best tip and the best thing you can do to keep your camper cooler, faster, what you're basically essentially doing is reducing the plenum space up inside the AC. So instead of that air just kind of circling around and wheezing into the duct system, this modification is going to force that air right down into the ducts quicker, faster, where it needs to be to get it going. And it's gonna increase the output of the air that comes out of all of your little ducts throughout your camper. And that is huge. I cannot stress this enough. This modification has been awesome. So many people have done this. Everybody's been extremely pleased and happy with it. And I'm telling you, if you wanna get the camper cooler, you wanna get that air to where it needs to go. And this way, your RV is gonna stay cooler and the AC is not gonna be turning on as much and also decreasing your bill. It's a great modification. And if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend going and checking that video out. It's simple, costs you about $10 and you just can't beat the results. And as always guys, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please think about doing so. We have lots of videos on RV modifications, DIY projects, storage, organizing, as well as our travels. So if you're into any of that, you might like our channel, hit that subscribe button, helps us out, we appreciate it. Okay, another little item that we like to use are these Camco reflective pillows for your skylights. We like to put these up in the skylights when we're in really hot areas like Nevada for the summertime. These things are great. They essentially have the Reflectix on one side of the pillow. You just shove them right up into your vent area. It's gonna reflect that sun right back out and they have them black and white. It's gonna keep that camper cool. It's gonna reduce how much sunlight and heat can come into it. So these Camco reflective pillows can just be really effective at keeping that heat from just pouring into the skylights. We have three vents in our RV. We love to use it in the loft area above the mid bunk. Just pop it right up in there and it's just gonna keep that area a lot cooler. So speaking of mid bunks, if you guys have a mid bunk, there's a few modifications that you can do, maybe even on some of the bunk houses. As you can see in our mid bunk, it only has one AC vent. And obviously this is a slide out, so you don't have as much insulation in the roof right here. It gets really hot in here. So what I did was I opened up a piece in our loft and I found out that there was actually no ductwork in there. I added ductwork and I added a fan that's going to pull the air into the mid bunk. By adding this little fan into the duct system, as we run our air conditioner, it actually pulls that cold air down through the duct that I put in there into the mid bunk, cooling it off a lot quicker. This has been a great modification. And again, I get into more depth about this modification in that same AC modification video that I talked about earlier. So I definitely recommend going and checking out that modification video because you get to check out both modifications. And these are two important things that can help keep your RV cooler, especially if you have a mid bunk. And then another thing we did, as you can see right here, this is actually an event that goes into the basement. It's basically the heat return for the furnace. Now in the summertime, you can just feel the hot air coming in from the basement right through that vent. So what I did was I put some Reflectex on cardboard and I keep a piece in there just to reflect that heat, close that space up and keep that hot air from coming into the mid bunk. Now, the only thing I will stress is in the winter time, as soon as you go to use your heat again, as soon as you go to use your furnace, you need to remove this from in there. That way you can still get airflow and air return to your furnace. But in the summertime, when we're not using it, another great little tip, it just keeps that hot air from flowing into the mid bunk. And since we just brought up Reflectex, 
let's talk about it. Reflectex is great. We use it all over the place. The biggest use that you're gonna see most people using this is in the windows. Now I'll tell you right now, we're not big fans of using it in the windows, but it's very easy. You can cut out the shape of your window. You can usually just force fit it right in there. It usually holds by itself, or maybe just a little scotch tape, and that will greatly reduce the heat coming into your camper. For us, we just don't want to live in a cave all summer. We love the natural light. We love having the windows open. We love seeing what's going on outside. But if that's not a concern and you just can't keep the RV cool, putting Reflectex up in all your windows is going to greatly, greatly insulate and keep that heat from coming in. So I highly recommend it. We don't do it, but it's something tons of people do. It seems to be really effective. And what we do do is close our blinds most of the time on the sunny side of the camper. So depending on what time of day it is, we always keep our blinds closed, um, keeps the sun from coming in. And if you get these blackout shades like we have versus some of the other flimsy shades, these blackout shades actually also keep a lot of that heat from coming in. We notice as soon as you pop these open, you feel that sun, you feel that heat coming in. So that is something we do, but we do like the natural light coming in. And we try to only close the shades where the sun is really beating in on the windows at that time of day. We also use our Reflectex inside some cabinets, pantry, and places like that, especially on our main kitchen slide out. Any of the slide outs, again, those walls are not gonna be as well insulated as usually your exterior walls. So our pantry sits in a slide out. So we have Reflectex going from top to bottom all along that back wall. We have it in the cabinet over the microwave, which gets really hot. We also keep it underneath the bed as soon as you open the bed we like to keep that whole floor area with the reflectix in there some people like to keep the reflectix in the front cap to reduce the heat on those front caps that can get really hot again they're insulated okay but anywhere you can sometimes put reflectix or hide it it's just going to reduce the amount of heat that comes in it's nothing that's going to be super super effective it's just like oh my gosh this is amazing but it's definitely going to help out and just help out with the insulation just a little bit and every little bit helps so I just mentioned these slide outs. Something else we do is we like to put foam backer rod underneath our big slide outs. And that's gonna also keep any kind of heat from just coming in underneath there or around the sides. This is also an effective method for the winter time to keep those cold breezes from coming in. Now, if you have some of the bigger slide outs where you have the gap underneath them, I recommend getting like a three quarter inch or an inch or even bigger if you can find it, foam backer rod. And it's just real cheap stuff you can find in Lowe's, Home Depot, you can get it on Amazon. I'll have links down uh, in the video description below of anything we talk about today, by the way, as well. But what this does is not only is it effective, for protecting your slide outs from rocks, Legos, and things like that going underneath, which can damage when you go to bring your slides in, but it also just keeps that extra little bit of heat or draft from getting in your camper. And we have a whole video on that project as well, put a link up to it and you can go check out that when you're done watching here. And the last thing I wanna to touch base on to try to keep cool in the summertime and reduce the heat in your RV is cooking and how you cook. The propane ovens and stoves can really, really heat up the RV really fast. So we like to use the Blackstone grill as much as we can, cook outside. If not, we love using our Instapot. That's another great way to reduce the heat, not use that propane oven, which is gonna make the RV so hot. Microwaves, and we also like to use our toaster oven or slash air fryer. It's been great. It has a lot of different mods on it for cooking different ways, and it just doesn't heat the camper up nearly as hot as that propane oven does. Cooking outside, instant pots, microwaves, air fryers, um, these are all great ways to just reduce that oven heat that you're gonna get from cooking. Now, if you guys have any more tips that we didn't talk about or anything you can think about to try to stay cool, hey, comment down below, let us know. Love hearing about it, love hearing what you guys do, modifications, products, anything to stay cooler in these RVs because we know that's a challenge, especially if you live in full time in them like we do. So hey, hit me up down below. I'd be curious to see what you guys do to try to stay cool as well. And that's it guys. I hope some of these tips, products and DIY projects uh, will help keep you cool in your RVs over the summer. As always, we appreciate you watching. Get out there, start your full time RV adventure because why wait? We'll see you guys next time.